Hi there, this is Mustafa with Lightspeed, and in this video, we're going to take a look at how we handle returns and exchanges in Ecom. First things first, we'd have to connect to our Ecom back office and go into our orders page. Here you'll find all of your current or past orders. Let's go into an order we want to work with. So let's start with talking about returns. A customer can initiate a return if they have registered on your website. Otherwise, you'll have to create that return for the customer. Now, we're working with this order here, which we've completed, and this is the item that the customer wants to return. So first things first, you would have to ask them to ship it back to you. So let's create a return. Clicking on the Create Return button, will pop up a form to be filled out to initiate this return. We're going to return a quantity of one. The status can be used to track the phases of your return. In this case, this is a new return. We could set up a return reason that the customer has given you. Maybe your customer had buyer's remorse and dictated by your return policy, they're able to initiate a refund. You could set the action for that return. So because they have returned the item in a specific state that you require and also within a specific time frame, dictated again by your return policy, we could say we're going to give them a full refund. Now here, you could notify your customer that a return has been created. Pro tip, you can customize your automated notification emails by going into settings, and under website settings, you will select notification emails. Further down, you could send a message to your customer, add comments as to why this customer has returned this item, and also add internal staff notes. We're going to create this return. And now we can see that there is a return initiated. Now remember, this doesn't mean that you have refunded your customer. So let's do that right now. The first thing you should do is identify what kind of payment type they've used. In this case, they've paid by invoice. But if you were using a processor like Stripe or PayPal, it's important that you complete the refund on your payment provider's portal to ensure that your customer has gotten all of their money back. So here, we're going to create a credit invoice. Now this simply tells Lightspeed that we're going to credit them the quantity of one of $23 for a small black t-shirt. And we also are going to credit them the shipping fees. You could update the stock here, which will update the stock back on your retail point of sale. And you can also notify your customer down here. So let's add that credit invoice. Once that's done, you could jump onto your payment provider's portal to finish the refund. We looked at this from a point of view of creating the return ourselves. However, if your registered customer has initiated the refund on their end, you'll be able to see them and manage them under returns. Let's now take a look at how we can process an exchange. So we're going to select the order that we're going to be working with under the order page on our e-com backend. And once again, your customer can initiate a return of a specific item that they want to exchange on their end if they're a registered customer on your website. Otherwise, we could handle it on our end. So the first thing we're going to do is ask your customer to send the item in. Once received, we can go ahead and initiate a refund for that particular item. So just like when we created a return for the customer, we're going to now add a credit invoice. And the customer only wants to exchange one of the items on this purchase, and that's going to be the basic t-shirt. So we're going to create an invoice for this. 
and in this case we're not going to refund the shipping costs but we do want to update the stock because it's a brand new item and we will notify the customer that their credit for this item is underway. Once you've created a credit invoice, don't forget that you'd have to log into your payment provider's portal to finalize this item's refund. Now, let's duplicate this order. Duplicating this order will change the order into a quote. And from here, we're going to use this quote as a staging ground for our exchange. Now, because we've duplicated it, all of the items and the details of this order are exactly the same. So what we're going to do is add and remove the appropriate items to match what the customer wants in exchange. We're going to remove this field coat because this is not one of the items that they've returned to us. We'll add the product that they actually needed. In this case, we had spoken to the customer and they mentioned that they wanted to exchange the black basic t-shirt in small for the same size but in blue. So we'll choose the basic t-shirt in blue and go ahead and delete the black t-shirt from the quote. Also note here that you can edit the payment method that they had initially selected and then choose a new shipping method as well. We're going to stick with Canada Post expedited parcel, which is what they initially used, and press done. Once you're satisfied with how you've staged this exchange, we can now convert it into an order. We can also notify the customer, which is always nice, and finalize the conversion, which will turn it into an order. From here, you're simply going to fulfill this order. So we could print out a new label, mark it as shipped, which will, again, notify the customer. And of course, you want to make sure to grab payment before doing any of this. If the customer is a registered customer, they could log into your website with their credentials and finalize the payment. And there you go. We've looked at creating a return, how to finalize refunds, and how to appropriately fulfill exchanges. As always, thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact our support teams.